outrageous tyranny pouring in around us. I feel like I'm trapped in an Indiana Jones movie where the sand of the water is pouring into the chamber, and I'm saying, we got to get out of here. It's rising, and the, you know, the, the yuppies, the trendies, the know-it-alls, you know, they're, they're too busy slicing their arms or hurting themselves or you know, wearing diapers as adults, you know, whatever little decadence they're into, to even worry about a total global government program that's hiding in plain view that they call testing, Department of Energy here in the U.S., set up in Europe as well, spraying, mixed in with the jet fuel in some of the cases, mounted to government aircraft, all admitted, not condensation trails, ice crystals, no, but barium salts, lemon dioxide, other nuclei mixed in so that it creates an artificial haze. And NASA admits we're more than 20% darker, less sunlight hitting us. You don't just think they put that in the Matrix movies, you know, 10 years ago because they thought that up about a global plan to black out the sun. But the scourge isn't the machines, it's us. This is part of the UN says if you don't play ball with them, they'll just spray you and, and shut down your weather. Now, 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 here's my frustration. I knew they were going to announce global government with this European crisis years ago. It's now happened. I, I, I know all of this. I know they're spraying us every day. I know they're spraying my family. I know we're all filled with heavy metals. I know it's hurting us. And Aaron Dykes, I asked him last Friday, I said, get together our research for Dark Skies, the documentary. We may make it someday, but we're just going to go ahead and start releasing the information and reports. This is just a small part of it right here. Government documents. Hour after hour of them on video. Okay? And then I just said, look. He was literally out there 20 minutes ago before we went live. I said, get in here. we got to present what you've got. D -d 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 all these video clips, all this documentation, it's so frustrating. Will the yuppies even watch? Will they even care? Because you get into how they denied this stuff existed, but the people that broke down what they were doing accurately named the chemicals that were being used. But the question is, how long has it been happening? Why is it happening? What's the end game? I'll tell you the end game here at the first, then we'll go to Aaron. The end game is aluminum dioxide in all the soils where you've got to go to companies like Monsanto. They're coming out with whole seed lines that will grow in aluminum poisoned soil. But that's only part of it. It's about the seed banks, the seed arcs, all of this. It's about weather weapons shutting down regions that don't play ball. They're already talking about a Chicago mercantile system that will uh, bet on the weather. Well, it's going to be a rigged casino. They don't set up casinos without putting their, you know, finger on it without controlling it. This is about playing God. This is about world government. And this is about genocide and population reduction. Aaron, I'm going to interject points here, but we've only got about 25 minutes, and, and we'll come back and do part two, part three, part four, because this is so important. It shows how they can keep something bigger than the Manhattan Project secret. We expose it over the years accurately, and they come out and go, yeah, okay, we've been doing it, it's secret, but it's for your own good. And we admit it's happening, but the details are secret. So you've got the floor. Uh, go through as much as you can, the video clips, all of it. This is incredible information. Yeah, just like you saw back in the 70s with Kissinger and the food as a weapon plans under national security, you see uh, global warming and chemtrails under a national security proposal. And you'll see a lot of the quotes here of Kissinger talking about food as a weapon. Uh, is the U.S. prepared to accept food rationing to help people who can't or won't control their population growth? They're talking about withholding food aid. Would food be considered an instrument of national power? You've heard the Club of Rome talking about how uh, mankind itself is the enemy uh, when it comes to environmental concerns like global warming and the rest of it. The real enemy is mankind. That is from uh, the 1990s with the Club of Rome group. And then coming up... At that a was the head of the CFR, too. He's also Club of Rome. Uh, that was uh, Haas saying that. Oh, these groups all interlock, Alex. And you see here where uh, the Air Force wants to, quote, own the weather by 2025 and more to use it against the enemy and to help their own forces. And it goes on to, uh, it's not cued properly, but Secretary of Defense William Cohen admitting that weather weapons exist, that they can create hurricanes, earthquakes, and the rest of it. So this stuff is admitted, but it is hidden behind a national security pretext, Alex. Is that the right document? Well, you've got weather as a force multiplier, owning the weather 2025, and after that is the quote about William Cohen and how they are able to uh, use weather weapons. 
Well, take your time. I know I said we're in a hurry, but but but, but take your time as right we get here, to these. Global warming has been called a security threat because it's going to disrupt all these places where there could be droughts or food shortages, and you can guess who's going to be there to uh, create the solution. Here you've got William Cohen saying others are engaging in a type of eco-terrorism where they can alter the climate, set off earthquakes, volcanoes remotely through the use of electromagnetic waves. It's real. That's the reason we have to intensify our efforts. He said that in 1997 when he was Secretary of Defense. That was Army times, yeah. And the point is, all these military researchers, all these national security people, uh, are able to manipulate the weather. They're spraying God knows what up there. Uh, we know what some of it is. A lot of it's aluminum and, and sulfur uh, dioxide and the rest of it. But they've created this rationale that it's going to solve global warming. Uh, now let's go. That's just their cover. They always denied it until three years ago. Now they go, we were doing it, but it's secret. It's the same thing. Earth, we're, we're peace snakes. We're peace prize winners. Yeah. And they admit uh, one of the leading researchers of this whole geoengineering thing is David Keith, and he's got a paper explaining how the cloud seeding for the U.S. and for the Soviet Union goes back to the 20s. And uh, we have clips, I know, from Ben Livingston, if we want to play you some ready to go? Yeah, this is Ben Livingston, who was the father of weather weapons. And I saw in a little blurb in an article when they declassified that in the mid-60s they'd certified Stanford, and he'd done it as a meteorologist. This is a guy in like World War II flying into typhoons. I mean, he's a real trailblazer. It was like almost, I think it was 90 when I interviewed him. I think he's still alive, but yeah, this was like six years ago. And, you know, the point with Livingston was they could control, steer, create hurricanes in the 60s. So it just shows how far this stuff's come. Let's go ahead and go to that clip. My name is Ben Livingston. I'm the first person to ever see a cloud with the intention to cause it to do military damage. I know I can say that, and I did it several times before the next person did it. We were doing quite a lot of testing work out over the uh, test range at China Lake, California, where we uh, dropped cloud seeding flares or silver iodide generators into clouds or just where we wanted to to see what the reaction was. And it was there when I learned for sure that you could really change a cloud by the amount of silver iodide you put in and where you put it. These are uh, uh, <clears throat> cloud seeding dispensing units on the side of C-130s. As you can see, they, <clears throat> these units held 52, these dispensers held 52 units. We were the first ones to fly into hurricanes for the purpose of modifying them, uh, if you will. That was Project Storm Fury. I began to, to be extremely confident that we could, could do whatever we, about what we wanted to with a hurricane. The Project Storm Fury had been going on since 1961, and they had already done, or had done two experiments, one in 61 and 63. Well, by 1964, when I was there in 1964, I wrote the plan and, and uh, started to have a track and a mission for every flight that was uh, on the hurricane cloud seeding experiments. So we had documentation for everything. Operation and product storm fear are very positive. This report said that we claim they should consider now. If okay, that's just a short excerpt from an interview I did six years ago with Ben Livingston, the father of weather weapons. We're just demonstrating this exists, the cloud seeding, how they do it, moving right along, back to Aaron Dykes, because this is all going on, and you're supposed to just worry about football all day or what Lindsay Lohan's doing. I'm sorry, because what they admit they're spraying is brain damaging the population as neurological disorders go off the charts, as the honeybees die, you name it. Aaron Dykes, continue um, with your report while we show some footage of videos we were sent from around the world of the geoengineering program.